the other stakeholders, including the bulk oil distribution companies, are expected to finalize moves to pay by July 10 the more than 500 million CD debt, crippling the operations of some BDCs and banks. Speaking on the sidelines of the Oil and Shipping Africa Conference, the CEO of the MPA, Moses Asaga, expressed worry about reports of the imminent collapse of the affected BDCs and banks due to government indebtedness. The Chamber of Bulk Distribution Companies, BDCs, is alarmed majority of bulk distributors of petroleum products will be forced to halt operations by the end of 2016 if government fails to pay its debts. Government owes 17 of the 35 bulk distributors in excess of $500 million. The situation has also led to some crisis in the banking industry, where commercial banks, which facilitated the operations of the BDCs, could also collapse. But the CEO of the National Petroleum Authority, Moses Asaga, has assured government is determined to settle the debt. The National Petroleum Authority is very worried and we are always at the center of the meetings between the Bank of Ghana, uh, Ministry of Finance, and the commercial banks, and then the BDC's representative. We've been looking at ways and means to be able to solve this problem of the debt overhang. By next week, we should now be holding a final meeting. Speaking on the sidelines of the conference, the managing director of Goyal, Patrick Akoli, said the company is positioning itself to carry out the supply of marine gas oil to vessels and wrecks of companies undertaking exploration and production activities in the country. This will help expand the local 20% share in the $300 million business. We have gotten these young guys in the system now. We, they need international exposure. They were all devoted to training of our young engineers in the, what, in the banking business and other offshore activities. Let's go on to some other stories where the Institute of Fiscal Studies says the IMF board's second review of the extended credit facility program for Ghana is more optimistic than the real situation suggests. Head of research at the Institute, Dr. John Kwachi, said the decision to revise key macroeconomic targets is a clear indication that the program has encountered some challenges. In April last year, Ghana reached an agreement with the IMF on a financial bailout backed by a three-year economic program under the Extended Credit Facility. The program is supported by a total financing of $916.8 million, representing 180% of Ghana's quota to be disbursed in eight equal amounts of $114.6 million each. In January this year, the IMF board completed a second review of the program and approved the third disbursement, bringing the cumulative disbursement to $343.8 million. But the IFS says its evaluation of the second review vindicates its earlier view that many of the original targets were unrealistic. The decision to revise key macroeconomic targets is a clear indication that the program has been encountering challenges. So it's not that all, all is rosy. Um, we think that the revisions that were made to the key macroeconomic targets are in the right direction. We consider most of the new targets to be more realistic. However, the new targets also suggest that macroeconomic instability will remain prolonged. And this is disappointing to us. The Institute also set the new act to eliminate completely the central bank from lending to government except in extreme emergency cases is premature and should have started with a lending ceiling of 5% of government's revenue compared to the previous 10%. The new Bank of Ghana Act should carefully balance the bank's independence with its accountability in line with international best practice. Thus, while there's a need to strengthen the bank's monetary policy autonomy, it is important that monetary policy supports the overall policy of government as the elected manager of the economy. 
Eugenia Adama of Accra drove home the first of four brand new Range Rovers in the MTN at 20 promo. Over 20 other customers won pleasure trips to Dubai, a house, cash prizes and mobile phones. The MTN 20 promo is to commemorate the telecommunication company's 20th anniversary. 12 customers won Samsung S7 Edge phones, iPhone 6 Plus and G8 handset. One customer received a check for 10,000 Ghana cities, while two others were presented with a check for 5,000 Ghana cities. Five other customers won one week fully expense paid vacation to Dubai plus spending money with their partners. Prince Bobier, who won a Kia Rio in last year's Mafini promo, won a two bedroom house this time. This year, my plans was to marry. So, as the car, as the car and the, this thing is matching, I have to fast, fast. The first one I won, I called some people. In the third row, they also won something. So, why not me coming back to? Continue winning my things. The grand prize winner, Eugenia Adama, could not hide her joy. I don't have my personal car here. Yeah. This thing is real. It's very, very real. I didn't believe it myself. I browse more, so I do make calls. General Manager for MTN Consumer Marketing, Noel Kojo Gansen, assured customers of more exciting prizes. We're quite confident that by the end of the fourth month, we would have impacted a lot of consumers during this reign, reign of the promo. Today, we had very life-changing, very impacting stories from the gentleman who won 5,000 Ghana cities in cash, who, is, who just got married three months ago and uh, is looking out to finish his home. So those are the stories that for us as a business actually touches us and makes us know that we're actually on the right path with engaging with our consumers and knowing the needs of our consumers and being there for them. Prepaid and postpaid customers can accumulate points to meet a set target by making calls, browsing or sending mobile money. The promo ends on August 31 this year and customers can check their point by dialing star 120 hash. Let's go on to the commodities market now and quite a lot of the commodities are recovering from the impact of Brexit and gold rebounded from its losses from what you can see at uh, the moment uh, in the previous session on investor demands for safety and uncertainty because of Britain's vote to exit the European Union. You see there an appreciation of an ounce of gold sold on the world market at 1,323 and 5 cents there. An increase of 0.86 percent again as against what was experienced yesterday at about 1,650. For cocoa, can be said of the same. If you recall, for the past two weeks, there's been a straight decline of uh, the ton of cocoa on the world market. Now, an appreciation of 0.96%, translating into $3,035 there, a ton of cocoa. Look at cutting as well, also experiencing an appreciation in price on the world market, $65 and 84 cents an increase of 2.27 percent and cotton prices surge on the back of this panic buying from spinning male owners on the world market so that's what's happening there but for crude oil as well it has rebounded to 49 dollars and 83 cents 2.5 percent increase there is what's experiencing and oil jumped more than three percent as per the calculations you see at the moment adding fuel to an existing rally on fading concerns over Britain's exit from the European Union. But that's it for the business news this evening.